you have to stand tall. Say, well, if you're going to come and arrest us all, you know, have at it. You know, yeah. their their jails are full anyway. They'll just you know let us out right away. And uh, they have you know, one th spot they're they're doing that with criminals anyway. So hey, you know. But they have one spot left for me. They have one spot left for me. Oh, okay. But hey, no lawyers. it's a free room and board. No, it's not. You'd have to pay for it. <laughs> Anywho, um, we have some lots of things going on today, and so uh, pretty excited about it. We have um, Paul Earhart, who's uh, here from the Gideons, and I'll introduce him later on. So, Paul, put your hand up there. Yeah, there. So if you're wondering, he's the, he's the guy up here, okay? But we'll get to hear from him a little bit later. And um, one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to have a love offering for the Gideons International. And this is uh, also going along with the love offering that we're going to continue on for the Hall family, okay? Uh, so if you were unprepared last Sunday to donate to that, don't worry about it. This Sunday, next Sunday, we'll... we'll decide when we're going to quit that, okay? But uh, the Hall family is in dire need of some help because uh, we all know that Christine, with her cancer, it's, um, it's kind of dire right now. We're always prayerful that our Lord might decide to uh, spare her life and uh, keep her around. We'll, we'll find out. It's up to God. And, uh, but we are still supposed to keep praying, right? Yes. Yeah. We're told to storm the doors of heaven, and so that's what we're, we're attempting to do. And uh, so that will be an ongoing thing, but we, we will have the love offering for the Gideons today. So uh, if you're going to make out a check, make it out to Gideons International. Gideons, did you everybody hear that? Gideons International. Gideons International. What is it? Gideons International. Okay, very good. So make sure that you do that. We've always been an extremely generous congregation, and I know that we're not going to uh, be a disappointment today. <laughs> That's just to prime the pump a little bit. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. yes. Okay. In fact, whoops, my check is right here. <laughs> because Cheryl made it out. Uh, yes, yeah, Cheryl made it out. Yeah, we we <laughs> talked about it, but she's the one who handles the checkbook. Because we both know what happens when I get it. As long as there's checks, there's got to be money. Some of you guys know what that is, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyway, now in, in just a couple of minutes, right before we have our uh, prayer time, we are going to be doing what we call a dry run through active shooter drill. Okay? This is becoming a necessity. And so. Uh, uh, Dave Stumpf is going to explain that in just a couple of minutes, but, uh, uh, well, I'll let him uh, talk about it. Right, Dave? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's always ready to talk about that. All right. So, uh, we'll take the prayer request now. Dave will give the, the presentation for the, the dry run, and then we'll have our prayers. Okay? So, let me share with you the prayer request that I have. <clears throat> And then you can add uh, if you don't hear these particular folks or issues, okay? Uh, so we want to remember the Gideons International. Uh, for Don and Susan Murphy, many, many of you know them. Uh, they moved to Bandon, uh, mainly because uh, Don's family was down there, and uh, that's the reason they did that. And Susan called not called, but texted yesterday saying that Don is really in some pretty tough shape. The only thing he can move is his neck. Uh, he's, and they're not sure why that is happening. Uh, he's been having some other kinds of issues and he's going to be going through some tests probably on Tuesday uh, to see if cancer has entered into his life. Uh, so uh, naturally uh, Don is uh, very concerned about what is going on. He's, he's afraid, but in a healthy way, okay? Because he has a deep faith in Jesus. So uh, he knows that it's a win-win re regardless. But uh, Susan, as you would know, her husband is having such a hard time. So she's uh, pretty upset. 
And so we want to remember both Don and Susan. And then also, Susan's friend Maudie uh, fell and she needs some prayer because she got banged up pretty, pretty bad. We already mentioned the Hall family, uh, continuing prayers for them. Uh, Cheryl had to leave because she was she got such a bad headache she had to, she had to go home and um, uh, she gets those every so often the heck is that? oh I thought that was water running <laughs> uh, a prayer of Thanksgiving uh, there was uh, 12 people that went up to Mary's Peak last Sunday and it was an amazing time amazing time prayer and praise a uh, lot of singing. We even had folks that, as they were coming out and down from uh, hiking around there, we were singing, and they joined in as they were walking past us. It was pretty cool. Uh, then also a thanksgiving for the uh, gathering that was uh, held last Thursday for the National Day of Prayer that was out at River Park. And so we are thankful to God that we had those folks uh, over here with Ron Edwards, he presented on the military and had prayer, and then I had the family in prayer. Uh, like a typical preacher, I went overtime. But I, I, I gave her a warning because she says, you have a little extra time. <laughs> so you know what happened. You just take advantage of that stuff. Um, but it was, it was a good gathering. And uh, we lift up to our Lord, the family of uh, Tana Nelson. This is uh, Debbie Gates' friend, and Debbie Gates is uh, artist Devin's daughter. And um, Debbie's friend, stepson, Chris Bailey, who is only 47, died last Sunday in an ultralight plane cr crash. So we lift them up uh, to our Lord, and another praise. Charlie uh, got some good news, and this is uh, Meg Custer's godson, that his doctor's appointment was moved forward. They thought it was going to be, what, was it almost a month away or something like that? And so he's going to be seeing uh, his doctor very soon. Uh, Lyle Summer went uh, in ER last night, and uh, not sure if he's back home right now, but it was, he was having some leakage where his... Uh, incision was and whatnot, so they needed to get that taken care of. Uh, so we lift him up. Uh, Patsy Clausen uh, texted us her daughter Karen. Uh, since her daughter Tiffany passed away, uh, she was not very old either, uh, she's been having some bad dreams and depression. She's back at work, but it's really tough on her, and so we lift her. A praise that uh, Gloria Claveter uh, is doing better. Kravita, Kravita, das gut, gut deutsche Namen, ja, sure, you bet. <laughs> Doing better. Uh, we gave her a nickname of Step, step and Fetch It, so uh, maybe it'll stick, I don't know, anyway. Uh, for Eddie uh, Getty, I think that's how it's pronounced, uh, Linda Perry's cousin, uh, he had... Um, he had an accident where a car that he was working on up on a lift fell off and fell on him. And uh, he, I think it was a broken pelvis, he's got some other broken bones and whatnot, but he is okay. It didn't, he didn't die, which is a good, a good deal, uh, and the healing process is beginning, and uh, so we lift him up. And then also, one of the issues that we have facing us in an, on an international uh, the scene, and that is uh, the, the difficulties in Ukraine. Uh, things are just ramping up, and so there's a, there's a great concern that uh, as the U.S., our country, may be involved in that, and that if that's the case, then what they're calling the spring offensive could get pretty nasty. Uh, so we pray that our Lord will intervene and bring a peace into that area where they can dissipate the animosity. Uh, pretty serious stuff. Okay, those are the prayer requests and the praises and the thanksgivings I have. Are there any additional ones? Oh, there's one. Well, we have a nephew that was in an ATV accident about 
week and a half ago. That's right. I'm sorry. I didn't put that down there. And he is in still in trauma unit, isn't he? Yeah, he's, he's, in ICU. he's in ICU still. They let him out and then they brought him back into ICU. Okay. Mike. Mike. Thank you. My sister Carolyn is tested uh, free of cancer. Cool. Others? Oh, over here, Beth. Hang on. Grab, grab that. Get, just push Kathy out of the way. And <laughs> I know that there are a number of people traveling. Hang on a second. We don't have her mic on. Kathy's mic? Did you hear her? Okay, there are some that are saying yes and others are saying no. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. That would be Kathy's mic. Okay, go ahead. All right, be loud, be loud. Just that a lot of people are doing a lot of traveling. Prayers for safe travel. Lots for all kinds of people. As they say, always look out for the other guy. Okay, Ron, you have one? Last Thursday was a good day. Praises. Uh, the preaching was good. We had three preachers. They did a great job. Thanks. National Day of Prayer you're talking about? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Karen. Karen? Oh, over here. <laughs> oh, she's got a mic there, Jim. Oh, yeah. Sure. Thanks. <laughs> it's okay, you're just doing your job. <laughs> so my brother's uh, son uh, was diagnosed with... Uh, colon cancer and he had the operation done but he still kind of hasn't been you know cleared of, of it so prayers for him what's his name Michael okay yeah thank you thank you any others okay Dave you're on dude You're going to come up here, or are you going to stand there? I don't know. Oh. I'll try both. Okay. So this is about church violence. We read about that, see it on TV. So the bottom line, don't freak out. If, someone, if somebody comes to the door with a gun, use your head. Either duck, lay down on your seat, roll on the floor. That gives... The security team, there's eight of us, gives us chance to do something. Escort them out or thump them with a bed board or whatever. So we have a, a story here. It says on, on Sunday, July 27th, 2008, a gunman walked in a church in Tennessee during performance of a children's musical and he started shooting people well eventually he was stopped and the police arrested him and he was charged with murder and sentenced to life in prison so good things do happen but a number of people actually died so the reality of violence in church we've seen that on tv while rare, the acts of violence do occur in churches, schools, supermarkets, grocery stores, just the mall, lots of places. So be aware. Keep your eyes peeled for weirdness. If somebody's wearing an overcoat in the hot summer, maybe something's not quite right with that situation. So get away, report it, do what you have to do. No church is immune to risk of violence. All churches of all sizes, locations, and resources have had you know, experienced acts of violence. So here's the things what to do. Someone call 911. If nobody's doing it, maybe pastor, call 911. Someone will be assigned, we hope. If there's an opportunity to keep the invader out by locking the door, 
do it. If there's a, a opportunity to remove all our members and guests from the premises, do so. If that's the only door or that one, those two places. And during service, usually someone will go back and lock the back door coming from the back parking lot. So that would be the only entrance. So each time you hear the beep beep of the door, like is about to happen, look to make sure you know who it is. <laughs> it, it was. Did you need a bulletin? Uh, did you get a bulletin? Oh, is there a bulletin? Yep, there, right there. Okay. Okay. Okay, very good. Thank you for participating in our <coughs> security lecture. If there's an opportunity to remove all the people, we'll do so. If the gunman's buddy is outside this door, that's probably not a good one to use. So we have one right here. You can exit out. And there's two doors that you can get out that way. Hopefully you have wandered around the church and learned the lay of the land. <clears throat> we need to quickly control panic situations because panic is where bad stuff seems to happen. And orders must be clear and direct, such as, ushers, secure the building, lock the doors. So-and-so, contact the police. And secure the nursery. I only see one person in there today. There's actually two. Okay. Yeah. And everyone... One's an older kid. You know? Okay. <laughs> the other is on the floor. So... We're going to practice that today, but don't get on the floor. Just kind of lay sideways in your seats. Know where the telephones are. Most people have one in their pocket. If you don't, there's some in the offices. And prepare for the worst case scenario. While not every violent incident can be prevented, we'll take steps to outlined in this fact sheet to keep our church from becoming, or to become better prepared for responding to criminal acts in church and our surrounding area. I think there's a little bit on the last page. Nope, that's done. So now, okay. yes? We need to be aware as who is sitting around us. Yes. Well, the whole situation, if it, we all did get on the floor, many of us couldn't get back up without help. That's when the 911 people would be arriving and helping us after everything calms down. So you may need a few minutes to relax on the floor. So at this time, we're going to pretend. Active shooter, bang, bang. Lean over whichever way you can. Or some of you say, get down! And you don't, or uh, and if somebody says duck, don't say where. Quack. Get off, you know, get off your chair, uh, because uh, don't argue. Why? No, down. This is one good exit door, and in there you'll find two exit doors: one through the quilter room, or one out into the alley. Actually, that one's bolted shut. Oh well, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> so you can use that one or uh, if they're out there hit them back there fellowship hall and then outside and there's lots of places hopefully it would all be resolved quite quickly everybody understand Questions. what we're doing um, can you tell us where the first aid kits are and that kind of thing not exactly, no. They're hanging on the walls. What okay, the, I believe the first, is in the office. Yeah, the first aid kit, there's two of them in the office, so we'd be able to easy access to that. Once things settle down, you know, you don't want to have somebody running back there and say, I'm here to help you, you know. Uh, you don't want that happening. You just stay down 
until we give the all clear. Um, and, and the thing to keep in mind is don't panic. I mean, yeah, you're going to get buzzed up, but stay down. You don't have to look to see what's going on. You can hear. Yeah. And I know we have a nurse or three or a doctor, so those people hopefully could help out. And many, many people have had your basic first aid, Red Cross, CPR stuff. One thing we learned in the military first aid training was put a piece of plastic over a bullet wound in the chest. It stops sucking air so that your lung doesn't collapse. So a piece of wax paper or cellophane or your hand, whatever it takes. Okay. And number one, call on the Lord. Yes. yes. Call on the Lord. Yep. You'll have lots of time to do that when you're on the floor. Because we're not going to stand up and pray. We're going to be praying while we're down <laughs> on the floor. Okay? Good. Good point, Ruth. Yes. Back there. Is it permissible for a member of the congregation to shoot the intruder? Yes. Yes, it is. Yes, indeed. Yes, it is. There, there are a number of concealed carry people in our congregation. We don't want to name names because that would put them as a target. Yep, the main thing is we say get down, you get down, stay down. And let the uh, folks that are trained to take care of the situation do that. And, you know, I, I hope I'm, I'm coming across serious enough to where we understand that nowadays these things can happen. Uh, churches are getting targeted. And we want to uh, strive to keep ourselves as safe as possible. Is there a hand? Yeah, there's a hand back yard. Yeah, Linda? Do you know who's in charge? Yeah. 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 If this happens, do we know who's in charge? One of the uh, persons, we have folks that are like security. Did you want to talk about that, Dave? Yeah, we have eight people on our security team. So any one of them, if someone has, uses an authoritative voice, they probably are in charge. So if this happened like next Sunday? I don't know. The whole point where we don't want to, a bad guy could grab someone, start naming names, or you're yeah. next. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yep. yeah. Any other questions? We need to move on to our time of prayer, so let's do it. Well, gracious God, Heavenly Father, we give you, first of all, thanks for your presence with us. And as we have just gone through this um, dry run, uh, bless us, Lord, that we will use our heads if this ever happens, and we ask that you will cover us with your protection and help us to be diligent, uh, help one another, and, well, Lord, just give us common sense. And uh, so thank you for uh, hearing our prayer on that behalf, that uh, you'll give us your grace and uh, surround us with your love and protection. We also give you thanks, Lord, for the Gideons International. We give you thanks that they are disseminating the uh, scriptures to so many different places and uh, that you will bless Paul as he is presenting to us this day. For Don and Susan, uh, for Maudie, for the Hall family, for Cheryl, for the family of uh, Tana Nelson, for Charlie, uh, for uh, the situation in Ukraine, uh, for Lyle, for Patsy Clausen's daughter Karen, uh, for Mike and Carolyn, a praise for Carolyn, uh, for traveling safety for all people, uh, for Michael, colon cancer, and with the praises that uh, the National Day of Prayer was a success and there were blessings that abounded at, during that time. Uh, a praise to you, uh, Lord, that Gloria is doing better. A praise to you and thanksgiving uh, for the gathering at Mary's Peak. Grant, Lord, that your Holy Spirit, your presence has covered not only Mary's Peak, but the surrounding area and beyond into our nation. 
giving you thanks and praise for Charlie, who is uh, doing better and having his appointment move forward. All these uh, folks, Lord, all these issues we lift before you, seeking your grace, seeking your action and uh, intervention. And Lord, we will continue to praise you and seek that we can understand or try to understand uh, your will for all people and in particular for this congregation. Grant us peace as we gather for worship. And so we give you praise and thanksgiving in the name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. Would you please stand as you're able for our worship? This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, 
one God, now and forever. Amen. true heart, and admit our sins unto God our Father, sincerely asking Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made, made heaven and earth. earth. In the Bible, 1 John chapter 1, it says, If we say have done nothing to offend God, we're only fooling ourselves and not telling the truth. But if we admit our sins, God, who is faithful, right, and good, will forgive us our shortcomings and make us clean from all our wickedness. I will, I will confess, confess my sins unto, unto the Lord, Lord and I will trust that God will forgive my wickedness and unfair judging of others. Let us confess our sins together. Gracious God, I know that I am naturally sinful and unclean, and I know that I have offended you in thought, word, and deed by what I have done and by what I have left undone. I have not loved you with my whole heart, and I have not loved my neighbor as myself. Therefore I come to you for shelter in your limitless mercy, seeking and asking for your grace, that you will forgive me, renew me, and lead me as a result of the life, death, and rising from the dead of your Son, Jesus the Christ. Now hear the good news, for Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us, and He has given His only Son, Jesus, to die for us. And through Jesus, God forgives us all our sins. To everyone who believes in Jesus, He gives the right to become a child of God and gives to them the gift of His Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Is uh, CJ going to come up today or what? We got a whole parcel. Yeah, I'm just checking the nursery here. Okay, come on up here, guys. Join me. Woohoo! Oh, yeah. I'm loving this. We got some kiddos. <clears throat> there he is. CJ is on the run having fun. Yeah. You a mean motor scooter. Here they come. Cool. How? What's that? Ooh, you got a Spider Man t shirt. That is so cool. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, does everything Spider-Man. Guess what this Spider-Man is? Because they still got me done. Oh my goodness, look at... Oh, he, disappeared. he disappeared, but he can see through it. He's got the little mesh there. Okay, let's put those things down and sit down so we can get this done, okay? It's cool, we got a little story. That's right, Jesus died on the cross. You are right. 
You're gonna put that? Okay, open it up. Let's get it. Oh, oh boy, and there's something in there. Yeah. Okay. Can you hand it over here, and we'll have them open it? Okay. Oh, well, it just fell open. Let's just let's just see what. Oh, look out uh, here. Here's a little car. Is it's that a, a match bus? Truck. Yeah, it's a fire truck for sure. Yeah, it actually works. Yeah. Now, if I had this, it'd probably be broken already. So, there you go. Let's close. There you go. Okay. So, what do you know about a fire truck? Um, fire trucks have. They use. If those um, fire, so, they put out the fire. The water is the water is the some of things that have water inside of them. That's right. That's right. Fire. That's right. Both of you are correct. They fight fires. They ha they shoot water on it, don't they? And if it's not water, it's something else that helps put the fire out. That is very cool. You are so right. All right. That's right. You have the water in the hose, and that's and that's a ladder. So if it's a tall building, they can get up there, and then they can uh, fight the fire. They can uh, put the water on there, and also if there are people that are in danger, they can help get them down. Isn't that cool? Well, you know what? In today's yeah, lesson, okay, hang on a second. Work with me, okay? Shh, just a minute. When Jesus was uh, talking to his disciples, he was talking about that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And what that means, hey guys, what that means is that when we get into trouble and when we're afraid that uh, things are going to be bad, Jesus says, I'm the one who is going to come and help you. I'm the one who, when you do bad things, of course, you guys never done that, right? You've never done a bad thing. And also, when he, he got out. When he got out of the tomb? That's right. He rose. The tunnel. Oh, in the tunnel. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, what, uh, what Jesus is saying is that when you have fires in your life, when things are really going bad, and you th it's kind of like you're going to just get burned up, you're not going to be around anymore. Jesus says, I come... And I'm going to forgive your sins when you do bad things. And when you're in trouble, I'm going to come and help you. And you know how, how Jesus does that? He sends people. People who love you. People who want to take care of you. And they help you. Isn't that cool? That's very cool. Alright, so when you see a fire truck, you remember Jesus is one who comes, who will put out those fires in our lives when we're hurting, when we're suffering, when we've done bad things. Yeah. Did you see one go by? Yeah, okay. Cool. Oh, no, okay. Oh. Okay. Very good. All right, so when you see a fire truck, what are you going to remember? Jesus what? That's Jesus. I know Jesus was a guy. Okay, so you're both right. When Jesus comes, he's going to put out the fire. Yeah, because... The devil wants to put us on fire. He wants to he wants to kill and destroy us. But Jesus says, "Uh uh uh, you're not going to do that because I'm going to put that fire out and I'm going to kick you out of here." Cool, huh? You can remember that when you see a fire truck. So, now we're going to have a prayer. Remember what we do when we pray? CJ, help us out. What's the first thing we do? Hey, okay, pay attention now. Pay attention. We're going to learn how to pray here, okay? Watch it. Pay attention. Here we go. Oh, Gesundheit. God bless you. All right. He's folding his hands. What's another thing we do? Close our eyes. Close our eyes. What else, CJ? Bow our, heads. Bow our heads. And why do we do that? Because. Well, you said because, and that's a pretty good answer. It's because we want to show God respect. In other words, we want... We want to pay attention to what we're praying about, okay? So let's pray. Okay, hang on a second. We'll look, okay? Thank you, God, for sending your son Jesus so that when we are in trouble, when the devil wants to get us into trouble, you come and you help us. You, you uh, make the devil go away, and anything that is hurting us, you're going to come and you're going to help us come through it. And we thank you for doing that. And we pray this in Jesus' name, and all God's children say, Amen and a yee All right, now, we're going to, well, let's not, let's not make it further broken, okay? <laughs> let's put that in there. Now, here's what we do. We give 
we're going to give a little treasure chest to you, okay? We're going to, cl you close it up there, latch it, okay? All right. Now you're going to take it out here and you're going to hand it to somebody, okay? Anybody you want to, you can hand it to them, all right? And then, you see back here, Miss Debbie, see her hand back here? See you back here? You're going to go with her. She's got some neat stuff. She's going to tell you a story and you're going to do some stuff. Pretty cool. All right. Have at it, dudes. See you later. All right. Children's Church back there. All right. Yeah, you can give that to somebody out here. Just hand it to somebody. Yeah. 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 Well, you look at that. Now, you know the drill, right? Oh, well, you take it home. You put something in there. You don't tell me what it is. And you bring it back here so we can use it next Sunday. Which means you'll have to come to worship next Sunday. <laughs> Pretty cool! All right, there's a double thing. <laughs> we have ways of getting you here. Good morning. Our psalm today is Psalm 146 on page 622 of the Bible. And we will do it responsively. I'll read the first verse and you read the second verse. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in princes and a son of man in whom there is no salvation. When his breath departs, he returns to the earth. On that very day, his plans perish. Blessed is he whose help is in, the is in the God of Jacob, whose help is in the Lord, his God. Who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever. Who executes justice for the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners. He upholds the widow and the fatherless. But the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations. Praise the Lord. The second, or the first reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 6, 1 through 9, and so forth. That's on page ten, uh, 1086. Now, in those days when the disciples were increasing in number, a complaint by the Hellenists arose among the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. And the twelve summoned the full number of disciples and said, it is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out among you seven men of good repute, full of the spirit and of wisdom, who we will, we will appoint to this duty. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And what they said pleased the whole gathering. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip and Procurus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenius, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. They, these they set before the apostles, and they prayed and laid their hands on them. And the word of God continued to increase, and the number of disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. And Stephen, full of grace and power, was doing great wonders and signs among the people. Then some of those who belonged to the synagogue of the freedmen, as it was called, and of the Cyrenians, and of the Alexandrians, and those of Sicilia and Asia, rose up and disputed with Stephen. And Stephen said, You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit. As your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets did your fathers not prosecute? And they killed those who announced beforehand the coming of the righteous one whom you have now betrayed and murdered, you who received the law as delivered by angels and did not keep it. Now, when they heard these things, they were enraged, and they ground their teeth in him. But he, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God 
and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens opened, and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out with a loud voice, and stopped their ears, and rushed together at him. Then they cast him out of the city, and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their garments at the feet of a young man named Saul. And as they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And falling to his knees, he called out in a right voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he said this, he fell asleep. The second reading is from 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2 through 10, which is on page 1204. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual mate, milk that by you may grow up into salvation if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him a living stone rejected by men but in the sight of God chosen and precious. You yourselves are like living stones are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture Behold, I am laying a Zion in stone, a cornerstone cho chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So the honor is for you to believe, but for those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called out to you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you have not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. And this ends the scriptures. Please rise for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. I can't remember what page it's on, but it's 1,000 something. 1,000 what? 70. 70. 1,070. Okay. Jesus says, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and you still not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am the Father, in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else believe on account of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, and the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. The Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit 
Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Melt me, mold me, fill me, use me, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Before we have uh, Paul come forward and give us uh, some of the goings on and the work of the Gideons, I have just a couple of things to share with you having to do with uh, John chapter 14 where Jesus is talking with his disciples and he's reminding them that he is going to go and prepare a place for them. And the typical kinds of questions that come up is that, well, wh really, where are you going? Uh, you're preparing a place. How do we get there? And Jesus makes it very plain. You know, I'm going. I'm preparing. And when I do, I'm going to come back to you. And if that wasn't true, I wouldn't have told you. And so they're still not getting. So we have, we have uh, Philip and we have Thomas who are asking a question. Maybe we've asked it in the past. Uh, how do we know? And Jesus tells them, I am the way, the way to the Father. I am the truth. I am what you can believe. I am the Son of God. I am God. And I'm the life. I'm the one who brings you salvation unto life eternal with him in heaven. And then he reminds them, as a result of all of this, as they believe, that they will know the Father. He says, I'm in the Father, the Father is me, and when you see me, you've seen the Father. So don't be asking, show us the Father. You see me, and see, they had the privilege of knowing Jesus. They saw him. We don't, but what, what is the witness? How do we get to know? How do we get to see the Father? It's through Scripture. We, we listen to what Jesus says, and we embrace it. We believe it, and then we know that when Jesus appears, we're going to know that he's the real Savior. We won't have any doubts in our minds. And so then, uh, he gives us a promise that when, when you believe in me, you're going to be doing some mighty things. That's an amazing thing when you, when you think that Jesus says, even greater things are you going to do. Wow! That's pretty awesome. What a responsibility though, right? What a responsibility. But Jesus promises that he's going to be with us so that as we ask rightly, you know, we don't say, oh, G Jesus is going to get me with our, I'm gonna, uh, how about a Cadillac Escalade? <laughs> What is that? No. What is the right way that we ask God? That he will change us on the inside? That he can come and dwell in our hearts? As a result of that, then we reach out to others because we would want them to experience the very same thing that we ourselves do and what we will have at the last day. We will be with God in heaven, totally made brand new. The old has passed away. What a thing that Jesus reminds us. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Anything that is good, that is in line with the will of God. So that when we pray the Lord's Prayer too, your kingdom come, your will be done. Not my will, your will. So, there's a, there's a synopsis of the word of the Lord. And what, what uh, Paul is going to be sharing with you has to do with Jesus who is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the true bread who comes down from heaven and reminds us that no one comes to the Father except through him. And through the work of the Gideons, we see how the, the word, as, as it is disseminated, people come to know Jesus. And they get to know all about his grace that is there for them to save them. So here's uh, Paul Earhart. And he's going to talk to us about the work of the Gideons. And uh, I always know there's some awesome stories involved with that. So I'm sure we're going to hear some, right? Oh, yeah. Thank you, Paul. God bless you. Yes, thank you. It's a real joy to be here this morning. And uh, the last reading in John 14 was precious to me. I remembered how about 60 years ago, I had a pastor 
encouraged me to memorize that chapter. And while I'm glad I didn't have to quote it from memory this morning, <laughs> uh, still it's, it's been a very precious chapter. And of course, I've, it's come to mind many times uh, during my life since I memorized it as a young person. It's, it's a real privilege to, to be here again this morning for the Gideons. And first, I guess a little bit about what I do, not as a Gideon, but as a person. Uh, I help carry out uh, hearing conservation services. And that puts me all over the Northwest. And so a few months ago, I happened to be in uh, St. Mary's, Idaho, and was so privileged to go to St. Paul's Lutheran Church, which is a uh, sister church of this one. Just had a wonderful time. They were extremely friendly. Of course, I wasn't going there as a Gideon, I was just going there to attend church, but just had a great time, and they were so friendly, as you have been this morning. You've been very friendly to me, offered me coffee, talked to me, just made me feel real welcome. And that's so great, because I think as churches uh, and as individuals, that's so important to do today. We need to make people feel like it's a good thing that uh, they are here. So, I want to tell us a little bit about the Gideons, and I got to thinking about trying to explain the Gideons. Most of you probably know exactly what we do, or much of it anyway, but I got to thinking probably the best way to do it is to show a video clip from the Gideons that's professionally done. I don't consider myself, uh, I'm not a regular speaker, uh, except I'm authorized to speak, but that's about it. And so I think that the DVD will probably do a better job. It's only a couple, three minutes. So let's go ahead, if that will go, and turn it on. Ephesians 2.12 says that to be without Christ is to be without hope. To live without Christ is to live in a state of uncertainty, with little expectation of the future, and with no real solutions to life's most difficult challenges. Much of the world exists in this state of hopelessness. But to find hope in the person of Jesus Christ is to find hope in its purest form. Hope in Christ is more than a momentary respite from pain, more than a wish of things to come. It is true and lasting. It provides us with a strong and assured expectation of what God has promised, and it changes who we are and how we live. This hope is part of our salvation. It provides power for living. It gives us joy. It gives us protection. It gives us strength and boldness. It gives us comfort and peace. It gives us confidence in ministry. As children of God, we abound in the hope of Jesus Christ, daily experiencing the blessing of calling Him Savior. If we believe His Word is alive and absolute, we should not be able to contain the hope inside of us. With every Bible we place, with every scripture we distribute, and with every word of witness we share, we offer true and lasting hope in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. And as long as there are people in the world who do not know Jesus, who do not have hope, our work is not finished. So that, in a nutshell, describes a good part of what the Gideons do. 
Now, as a Gideon, I'm a member of something called the East Lynn Camp. The East Lynn Camp is based here in Lebanon, and it covers the following areas. We go east towards Sweet Home Cascadia, then come back on around and go to Brownsville, up toward the freeway, and then go, uh, I guess it would be back east, towards Sio, Lyons, and part of Mill City. So that's what our camp covers. And so that means that any of those areas we are free as a camp to pass out Bibles, provided, of course, we have permission to do that. We still do pass out Bibles near schools. Notice I said near schools rather than at the school, because unlike when I was a kid, the Gideons could come into the classroom in a public school and give a little spiel, and then they all gave us New Testaments. I got mine in the fifth grade. Of course, we can't do that anymore. <laughs> so, in fact, we can't even get on the school sidewalk. Uh, we have to make sure the sidewalk is a public sidewalk. So, that means there are a few schools we actually can't pass them out because the sidewalks are owned by the school, the buses are back in there too far, and so, we have to skip that one. But most public schools will allow us to come. We just don't show up and start passing out Bibles. Because if the school doesn't say it's okay to do this on that afternoon, we do it in the afternoon, of, of course we don't come. Because uh, we're not trying to do something that some parents would deem as totally illegal. We still have an occasional parent who comes up to us complaining about how dare you do this because my kid attends here or something. But most are just the opposite. They're very glad that we're there, that we're helping to pass out a, a little testament. And we don't give the entire Bible to them, we just give a small testament. And I've got some samples back on the table. Uh, when I, at the end of the service, I'll be back there for a short while. I won't stay terribly long because I'm actually mentioned I do this hearing conservation job and I still do it part of the year and I'm at work today going to La Grande, so I won't stay terribly long. But uh, uh, it's a real joy to be a Gideon and one of our most effective programs is this card program. I don't know how many of you use the Gideon cards at this church, but an advantage is that for one they're free as far as the card. And of course, you write something on the card, you send it to the person, and what you're encouraged to do is give a Bible. A Bible costs roughly $5. And so we encourage you to put on the card, if there's a space for it, let's see, this one doesn't have it, but some of them have a little space saying, I gave a five Bibles or one Bible or, or something. If you, But that's... You know, that, it's not essential to give a Bible and use the card. The card is a good Christian card. This one happens to be Sincere Thanks. We have them for other uh, events as well, uh, as well as e-cards. And so why don't we go ahead and take a real quick look at the card video right now. An ordinary greeting card says, Happy Birthday. Thank you. Get well soon. Congratulations. Happy anniversary. But a Gideon card says so much more. In addition to creating a meaningful moment, you make it possible for lives to be changed forever through the sharing of God's Word. Giving through the Gideon Card Bible program is simple. Choose a card. Personalize and send it. Then, donate Bibles. You can also quickly complete the process online at gideons.org slash send the word. With this simple gesture, you play a vital role in placing the gospel into the hands of those who may otherwise never receive it. Your gift might purchase a copy of God's Word for someone on the streets of Brooklyn or in Buenos Aires, a local hospital, or a school deep in the heart of Nigeria. More than 85 million copies of scripture are distributed each year in over 190 countries around the world. And each is distributed 
one by one by one. You may obtain cards in several convenient ways. From Gideons.org slash send the word or from the displays in your church or local funeral home. Already have a card? You can still participate by enclosing the simple Bible donation insert with your card. And I said, um, I don't know no Jesus, and there's no Jesus in this block. And uh, he, uh, at that time, proceeded to share with me the contents of the book in his hand. So I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And he gave me that little book and told me to take it with me. Told me to put my name on the back of it if I believed it. And uh, he turned and walked away. Share the triple blessing of Gideon cards. A blessing for you as you provide God's word for the recipient who receives your card. And for that someone you may never know who receives a copy of God's Word because of your simple act of kindness. Visit Gideons.org slash send the word today. I don't know where all the millions of scripture has gone, but I know where one scripture has gone. And it landed in my hands. And it was that scripture that began the journey for me toward a life of obedience to Christ. Send the word and change a life. So you are encouraged to use the Gideon cards. If you're into e-cards, there's even more e-cards than there are of the paper version. And that's also uh, at uh, Send the Word. And so if you're into, again, e-cards and sending them through the internet, that is a good way to go. Um, one thing we're encouraged to do each, well, when I say we're encouraged to do, what we're actually requested to do is at each church we visit, we mention the need of possibly gaining a new member or two. We're an aging group. I'm in my middle 70s right now, and I'm about the average age. That means there are some that are a fair amount older and a few, very few, that are younger. And unlike men's organizations in general, you know, you look here at this area, at the Mid Valley, if you ever go to the uh, Corvallis Hospital, you'll notice it says Elks Drive as you go up the hill. And there used to be a big Elks Club up there, which is not there anymore. Or if you drive here in Lebanon and, and uh, head toward Albany, You'll drive by a, what was formerly a big uh, Elks Club, now a church. And so men's organizations in general are, are kind of struggling in terms of new membership. Now, I'm very happy to say the East Lynn Camp, the Lebanon Camp, is one of the largest and one of the most active in our entire region. And you might say, well, what's your region? We cover Oregon and Southwest Idaho. And so you wouldn't think a small town like Lebanon would be, I think we're in the top five in, in the region in terms of membership and giving uh, to the Gideons International. So we're very fortunate. God has blessed our camp. And there's one church here in town, the Nazarene Church, that actually has five or six Gideons going there. Uh, and of course, that's unusual. That's not, not common at all. But we do like to encourage every church to have a Gideon if that's at all feasible. And what does it take to be a Gideon? Well, it, some people object to what it takes. The first thing nobody should object to, and that is you have to know the Lord and your pastor has to recommend you. Those two are, are the most important. But after that, you need to meet some requirements, either be a small businessman, or be uh, educated through college, or be a supervisor of some type at a, at a plant. For instance, quite a number of our Gideons were former supervisors out at the big champion plant because they held the supervisory role that qualified them along with what I mentioned first to become a Gideon. You might say, why do you even have that requirement? Well, that's the way the Gideons were set up way back when it started 
in uh, the late 1800s, early 1900s. And like the biblical Gideon, if you remember how God chose, chose them, he wanted the people who took the water lapping with their hands and drinking it that way, which was a small minority. And so, of course, we don't use that, but other, we, we use what I've just described to help qualify a person as a potential Gideon. So, um, how are lives changed through the Gideons? And I, uh, let's go ahead and play that uh, last clip. <laughs> I was raised in a nominally Catholic family. Uh, we went to church on Christmas and Easter, and I didn't take anything away from that brief flirtation with religion except for the fuzzy idea that there was a God and that I'd have to give an account of my life to Him someday. Right out of high school, I went into the Navy. I was assigned to my first seagoing duty station, a, a ballistic missile submarine. Sailors aren't known for carrying Bibles around. Right then, as I was thinking about the deepest questions of life, one of my crewmates, right then, providentially, held up a little Gideon Testament and said, hey, somebody gave me one of these when we were in port. If anyone wants it, you can have it. Didn't cost me anything. That's exactly what I wanted. I took that little testament and I started reading it, and it gripped me. Here was the truth. Here was the meaning and the purpose and the significance and the direction that I was looking for in life. All I had was this Gideon Testament. And I'd come across passages like Romans chapter 10 verses 9 and 10. If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So as I knew how, uh, I prayed, God, this is the life that I want. I believe you've done this for me through your son, Jesus Christ. I, I want this relationship with you. And, you know, all those hundreds and hundreds of feet of seawater and that titanium hull of the submarine were nothing for God's grace. It just penetrated all of that and went right into my heart. So I went on to Bible college and then from there on to seminary and then from there on to university, and then at the university I got a call to come and teach Bible at a theological seminary in Michigan, where I've been teaching for 16 years. So you can see what a tremendous impact the Gideons have had on my life, and not just my life, but also in the lives of all the thousands and thousands of people that I get to teach and preach and write and speak to. Uh, about the good news of the saving grace of God through Jesus Christ, the impact of the Gideons just keeps going on and on and on. So that's just a tiny, tiny example of the amazing things that God does through the distribution of His Word. And I was impressed that that gentleman, he was so ready for it. I mean, he took it and he didn't take it as, oh, what's this? Or maybe I can get some good out of this. But he knew that's what he was looking for. The Holy Spirit spoke to him in that sense. And so it was just amazing that he took it and, and understood it and, and did what the Scripture commanded. So what does Gideon's uh, uh, do we actually do as, as individuals? Well, of course, we pass out Bibles. Uh, we just had a recent visitation of motels in this area, and actually, much to my surprise, the Lebanon area took the most motel, uh, motel Bibles of, of any we gave out. Uh, we did parts of Albany and uh, Sweet Home as well. So God's Word is on the move here, and we know His Word is always on the move. Now, uh, one of the things we don't have much activity with in this camp is this life book. The life book is a book, there are actually two of them, geared for young people, high school and college age. And so a youth person uh, would take this book, there are instructions online how to use it, and he would work the kids through uh, one of the Gospels. And so this is available free, of course. It's only available, however, to people who think they want to use it. And so I don't have piles of them to give away. And then another thing we've started fairly recently 
is a conversations class. And I was so delighted to see in your back, you've got this reaching out through relationships. And that's what a conversation class is about that same type of thing. What we do is we come and offer to hold a short class, a couple hours, usually on a Saturday, and we walk people through how they might share the gospel with someone they know well or someone they don't know at all. And that can be pretty scary. Uh, sometimes and it, it's hard because the enemy is working on us and saying, oh, they don't want to hear it. Oh, you'll make a fool out of yourself. All kinds of things the enemy comes up with at the last minute. So the conversation class, uh, which is free as well, of course, helps members in a congregation hopefully become even more familiar with sharing the gospel. And as we all know, sharing the gospel is something we do with our lives, and sharing the gospel one-on-one -on -one is one of the very most exciting and important things we can ever do. So, thank you for letting me share for just a few minutes. And I'll be at the back following the service. I so appreciate the fact your church, this church, supports the Gideons uh, in different ways. And that, that's just so wonderful because it helps us to move forward with uh, the cause of putting Bibles in places where they are needed. Again, thank you. Thank you, Paul. Appreciate that, and um, I think there's a basket right over there by uh, Chuck, just off to your left and up on the on the shelf there. There's a basket, okay, and uh, we're going to. Hopefully, you've been thinking ahead and made out a check or have your cash ready or whatever it is. We're going to pass that basket along here, and. Um, you can place that in, and then we'll also put it, if, if you're not ready, we'll put it on the table back there, and you can also uh, contribute that way. So let's go ahead and start it around this way, and it'll make its way over to that side eventually. We haven't had the Gideons here since I think it was uh, 2019, if I'm not mistaken. Things got so messed up. But um, in your bulletin, of course, you received one of these, and uh, it gives you a chance to uh, make a donation uh, that way. If, uh, if you're not prepared for today, you can always contribute through this, okay? <coughs> So as it's going through there, we're going to prepare to uh, uh, sing our hymn of the day. And uh, I think you can probably pass the, the basket as we are singing. Uh, because I know that my Redeemer lives, has uh, eight verses, and we're going to sing them all. We're going to sing them all. That gives you a chance to pass the basket.
lives and while he lives I'll sing He lives my prophet, priest and king He lives and grants me daily bread He lives and I shall come to death He lives my mansion You stand as you're able. We confess our Christian faith. We use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Take a moment, share the peace with one another. <coughs> Please be seated for the end gathering of our tithes and gifts. Please be seated for the offering. Yeah, boy, I tell you. usher? Are you one of the ushers? No, they're coming. Yeah. But you can help over here if you want.
Let the vineyards, Lord, be fruitful and fill our empty cup. Bring the harvest from your soul seed, bread of life, please fill us up. Pull our hopes and drink together and combine them. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts. With them we offer our service and dedicate our lives to the care and all that you have made. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, with one God, world without end. Amen. Please be seated. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Then again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gracious God, remember us always in your kingdom and keep teaching us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Well, dear people of God, all things are prepared. The Lord invites you to his supper table. For those of you who are communing with us for the very first time, we do offer grape juice over wine. If you uh, desire either one of those, as you're coming to the server, simply place your index finger up. Worthiness to receive the body and blood of Jesus, his holy communion, is simply a believing heart. God knows it. And as you have confessed your sins, you have received Jesus' forgiveness. And it's all for his sake. This is why this meal is for you. It's to affirm the very fact that your sins are forgiven and you have the hope and the promise of eternal life. So come and dine uh, on our Lord Jesus. The ushers will help you in a moment. Thank you. 
please stand as you're able. Now the precious body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who's just given you himself in this meal of bread and wine, may he strengthen and preserve each one of you in true faith and in your serving to life eternal. Amen. Let's pray the prayer that I forgot to have you pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift, in faith toward you and in love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord God Almighty look upon you with his favor and give to you his peace. Amen. Now be seated for a couple of quick announcements. Hopefully you've looked through your bulletin and checked out things that are available to you. We have Bruce, number one. Uh, we've been doing New Morning Mercies, Grace Upon Grace, since the beginning of the year. And if you've had the book, and have not been using it, I urge you to delve into it because right now the daily devotions are on the Lord's Prayer. They started on the 4th of May and will continue through the 11th of May. And it's really focused, well written on the Lord's Prayer and I think you'll very much appreciate it. I still have two books left for who, whomever would like one yet. Thank you, Bruce. Uh-huh. Make sure you put that microphone up to your mouth there. This is the last Sunday to buy tickets for the quilt. Then we'll be drawing next week, next on Sunday for Mother's Day. So Hot doggies. Hot doggies. Yeah. Get your tickets. Get your tickets. It's uh, uh, five, $1 for five and, and no. no. One for one. One for one. Six for five. Six for five. Okay. What do I know? Anyway, not much. I have an announcement. Yes, go ahead. Yes. If you have someone who is on the armed forces prayer list and that needs to be updated, if they're no longer in the armed forces, would you please let me know and then I can have their name re removed. We're just updating. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. 
Just, yes. Uh, there's a basket back there. Mm -hmm. see, see Terry? Everybody look around there. See Terry? Okay, even if you don't want to. Terry's back there. There's a basket. And that's for the ongoing uh, offering for the Hall family. Okay? So if you weren't prepared last week, you are now. That's where you can place it. Uh, we'll have the basket out there maybe one or two more Sundays. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Oh. I'm Lord. not going to walk up front. Oh, for heaven's sake. Um, as you saw in your bulletin, we're having a little birthday celebration for Meredith's birthday on Friday. If you, I just need to get some kind of head count as far as how much pizza to order. So I, if you want to talk to me afterwards or just wave your hand, I just, I want everyone to have at least one slice. So if, if you're planning on coming on Friday, just kind of give me an idea. Okay, so, all right. Looks like everybody, Looks like everybody and their brother's uncle is going to yeah, be here. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, notice that the uh, the soap challenge was met from last last week. That is so awesome. Um, we we were asking for a hundred. How many do we get, Bruce? One seventy-two. One hundred and seventy-two. Hot doggies. I like that. And then. Uh, Keep in mind that the, uh, the prayers that we had at Mary's Peak weren't just for a day. They, are, they need to continue on. That God will blanket this area because we know that the Satanists were up there before. And uh, so we're getting back in the face of Satan. And uh, I, I, I think we see nothing but uh, dust from his hoof prints heading off. Just a bunch of Yes, that's right. And then uh, let me see. Praise uh, okay. Um, just a gentle reminder, when you come in for worship, could you all please silence your cell phones so people aren't interrupted by the cell phones going off? <laughs> I'm not pointing fingers, but you know who you are. I finally rem remembered to turn mine off. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any other announcements? The towels. Oh. oh, that's right. Towels. Look, what's next? What's next And rub-a-dub-dub, fill up the tub? Towels, towels. Uh, how many do we need? I don't, it doesn't even say that. Just keep them coming. Just keep them coming. Just keep them coming. Uh, now these are uh, bath towels? Hand towels. Both. Hand towels, bath towels. Now there, there are a lot of stores that run specials every so often. So head on over there and get some. Okay? It's kind of like when you, when you go shopping at the grocery store. Yes. Fill up a basket for uh, sharing with folks, you know? That's, it's a great deal to do. And you can even uh, get these little, um, uh, like, debit cards or whatever it is. Uh, and you can hand those out to people that are in need of some food, okay? And, and incidentally, if you know somebody that is in need, I do have some gift cards that are for... What's uh, grocery outlet? Is that what it is? No. Gros yes. Is it grocery outlet? Okay. Uh, where they can get, I think it's $35 of food. Okay. And so just so that you understand that, uh, but don't milk me dry because, you know, I have people that come in or, or need every so often. So, uh, but I have plenty and I'd like to invite you to, uh, if you know somebody in need, please let me know. Okay. We'll get that to you. Anything else? We have goodies back there. We're going to have our, our table prayer here when it comes up. There we go. Let's stand as we're able, and then as we get finished, we can head on in there and to have our goodies. Is that it? Mm. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Now, folks, don't forget to howdy and shake with folks you haven't seen before or seen for a while. Let them know you are so pleased you could come together and worship our Lord. And... Uh,
What? Well, for heaven's sake. <laughs> Do you have something to say there, Beth? Uh, no, I think I just did. <laughs> okay. All right. So, God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And he's coming again soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. So after you have your snacky poo, let's get out there and give him Jesus. All right? Go in peace. Keep serving the Lord. Thanks be to God.